Welcome to Medicare and Health Savings Accounts, or HSAs, Explained. In this session, we'll cover what individuals need to consider when becoming Medicare eligible and have a health savings account. Sponsored by BenefitCare.com What we'll cover includes Who is eligible for premium free Medicare Part A, hospital insurance? Next, we'll describe how the Medicare Part A, six-month retroactive benefit period works. Then, we'll explain who is an HSA-eligible individual and who can make contributions to an HSA account. Next, explain how contributions into an HSA may be limited by the six-month retroactive benefit period and penalties for excess contributions. Then, describe which Medicare-related premiums are considered qualified medical expenses for HSA distributions. And finally, list five ways to maximize HSA contributions once an individual becomes a Medicare beneficiary. First, let's discuss premium-free Medicare Part A, hospital insurance. Individuals, who have paid into the Medicare Trust Fund, in the form of FICA taxes, for at least 40 calendar quarters or 10 years will receive Medicare Part A at no cost, when they become Medicare eligible. Next, let's discuss premium-free, Medicare Part A, hospital insurance, and the six-month retroactive benefit coverage period. Medicare-eligible individuals who enroll in Medicare benefits, for the first time, who miss their initial enrollment period, and are eligible for premium-free Medicare Part A, are covered retroactively up to six months from the month they enroll in Medicare. So, let's look at an example. Here, we have an individual, who turned age 65, in April last year. However, if an individual turned age 65 on the first of the month, in this case, April 1st, then their Medicare eligibility starts the previous month. In this example, March 1st. So, let's assume this individual turned age 65 on April 15th. Then, they are entitled to Medicare effective April 1st. Premium-free Medicare Part A coverage can start no earlier than April, the month they were first Medicare eligible. Then continues for up to a maximum of six months. As the individual delays their Medicare enrollment, In this case they have creditable health coverage through their employer's high deductible health plan, the six-month window of retroactive coverage continues indefinitely. Think of it as a rolling six-month window of time. Once a Medicare-eligible individual enrolls in premium-free Medicare Part A hospital insurance, they are now entitled to six months of retroactive benefits. For example, when the individual leaves or loses their large employer group health plan and enrolls in Medicare using a special enrollment period. Now, let's look at how tax-free contributions, into a health savings account or HSA, are affected by enrolling into a social benefit, like Medicare Part A. Health savings accounts, or HSAs, are individual accounts, owned by one person. The amount that can be contributed to an account depends on the type of high-deductible health plan they have, and when they became an eligible individual. The amount they can contribute when they become eligible depends on the type of health coverage, either self-only or family coverage. In either case, the eligible individual, that is the account holder, or any other person, can contribute up to the maximum amount for the type of coverage they have. So, who is an eligible individual? Section 1201 of the Medicare Prescription Drug Improvement and Modernization Act of 2003, added Section 223 to the Internal Revenue Code. It permits eligible individuals to establish health savings accounts. According to this later IRS 2004 notice, an eligible individual can establish an HSA if they are covered by a high deductible health plan and not covered by any other health plan that is not an HDHP and not enrolled in Medicare. A subsequent IRS 2004 notice describes in more detail that once an individual account holder is entitled to benefits under Medicare, that means both eligible and enrolled, they can no longer contribute to their HSA accounts. In other words, simply being Medicare eligible does not prohibit an individual from contributing to an HSA. Only when an eligible individual also enrolls into Medicare and becomes entitled, do contributions end. What if an HSA eligible individual with family coverage has a Medicare entitled spouse? According to the IRS 2004 notice, the eligible individual with a high deductible health plan with family coverage can contribute to the family maximum, even though their dependent is on Medicare. The dependent cannot contribute. 
But how does an individual account holder who is no longer an HSA eligible individual, because they are now entitled to Medicare, determine their last month of contributions? That's where the six months of retroactive coverage benefit, under Medicare Part A, comes into play. In our previous example, the individual was eligible for Medicare, in April, of the previous year. The Medicare-eligible individual did not enroll in Medicare Part A, until April of the current year, due to leaving or losing their employer's high-deductible health plan, and using a special enrollment period. Because the individual is entitled to premium-free, Medicare Part A hospital insurance, their benefit is retroactive by six months. In this case, back to November 1st of the previous year. As shown here, in the previous calendar year, the individual can contribute to their HSA for the months of January through October, for a total of 10 months, but not November or December, and cannot contribute in the current calendar year, since the months of January through April are also included in the Part A, retroactive benefit coverage period. So, for example, let's look at HSA contributions for self-only coverage, for calendar years 2023 and 2024 and what the correct HSA contribution for this Medicare beneficiary is. For calendar year 2023, is 10 months, January through October, of the annual maximum self-only amount. Plus, a catch-up contribution for being 55 and over. So, let's do the numbers. $3,850 self-only maximum, plus a $1,000 catch-up contribution. So, the total maximum annual contribution is $4,850. But, to get the 10-month amount, you multiply by 10, then divide by 12. So, the maximum self-only HSA contribution limit for calendar year 2023 is $4,042. For calendar year 2024, there are no contributions, since the first four months are part of the Part A retroactive benefit coverage period. So, what happens if an individual contributes too much to their HSA account? According to this IRS publication, excess contributions are not deductible. If excess contributions are from an employer, the employer must include them as part of an individual's gross income, or as other income. Otherwise, an individual must pay a 6% excise tax on excess contributions. Typically, insurance premiums are not considered qualified medical expenses for distribution from an HSA account. However, once an individual turns 65 or older, HSA funds can be used for Medicare-related premiums, such as Medicare Part B medical insurance, Medicare Advantage Part C plans, and Medicare Part D prescription drug plans. The one exception, are premiums for Medicare Supplement, or Medigap insurance plans. They are not considered qualified medical expenses by the IRS. So, how does an individual maximize, their HSA contributions, once they become Medicare eligible? First, delay in enrolling in Social Security. Enrolling in Social Security, automatically triggers enrollment into Medicare Part A, and Part B. Second, delay in enrolling in Medicare Part A. If you have creditable coverage like an employer's high deductible health plan, there is no requirement to enroll in Medicare Part A when you turn 65. Third, stay on a high deductible health plan, to continue contributions to an HSA. Fourth, contribute the maximum allowed every year into an HSA. Finally, contribute the $1,000 annual catch-up contribution once you turn 55 and over. Together, Medicare-eligible individuals can maximize their savings, tax-free, for future Medicare-related out-of-pocket medical expenses. For more information about Medicare, go to official government websites, and see the new publication, 2024 Medicare and You. Or contact us at BenefitCare.com. Look for more videos on Medicare Basics, on our YouTube page, and on our Facebook page at BenefitCare, or on our website at BenefitCare.com.